and I've got great slideshows and uh, what happens there. I do it all from here. Uh, a lot of them want, want to know what it's really like to be with Keith Moon on tour. <laughs> oh, my God. That starts when I got a phone call from Paul Klipsch. He said, you the guy that's got that 6,000-watt PA? And I said, yes, sir. I want to come and see it. Paul was an efficient, efficiency freak. He could get 110 dB with one watt out of his speakers. If you know about clips, I was extremely blessed that he came to see me. And all day long, he's asking questions. Big tall guy. Why'd you do that? How come you did that? Where'd you learn to do this? Ham radio. No, like, where'd you go to school? Well, I didn't go to school. What do you mean? I, I barely, and it's true, I barely made it out of the... Uh, my senior year, terrible grades, uh, but I was <laughs> I was making more money in my teachers since I'd been 14, playing the organ in the theater and restaurants and stuff. Some of the things that Paul Klipsch did for me, but then he took me in his plane and we went back to Hope, you know, his, his hometown. And he had a, a lab there that was really something that, that was an old telephone exchange building. And that's where that picture was taken of you know, that plexiglass job. And uh, we just had such a great time. He taught me so much. But he said, I'm going to get you in to learning about why the telephone system didn't work. I said, well, what's it got to do with me? He said, well, they put the telephone system together, two wires from New Jersey to California. Every 500 miles, they had a relay station to keep the level up, keep the frequency level, all that kind of stuff. They got to the other end, and what did they hear? They heard this. It's like, what what happened here, boys? I mean, and this isn't what we put in, but yet that's what everything is showing up. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do about this, huh? Well, what they did about it was they got the Bell Labs involved with fourth, thousand scientists and Paul was he was instrumental in teaching me what all happened and how it was going to be so important for me to learn how they fixed it the two leads are Harvey Fletcher and Dr. Weldon Munson I bet you know about the Fletcher they sure do but did you know about this fix in the 4,000 scientists Nope, I didn't know that. A lot of people didn't know that, but they they had no equalizers. And so what what Fletcher Munson did, discovered was our ears are not flat, and everybody thought they were. No, they aren't. And the changes with level, as you know, all of that. This is what they came up with for perfect speech articulation for the phone company. That's 3K wide. Wait a minute. Isn't that something that, you, that you're sitting... Behind, it's behind you there, punching things behind me. They're all 3K wide, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And so that equalization is very important. But it, until I came along and, and got with ICOM um, and brought the EQ200 aboard, it was a different deal. It was they were all going for, for flat response rather than vocal yeah. intelligibility. Yeah, yeah. And flat response doesn't make it. Right. A lot of wasted, a lot of wasted energy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you get all these guys that want to do all their big bassy boom, boom, boom. Yeah, right. Sure. Well, all of your uh, power just went up and all that crap. That's uh, uh, Jan January of 82. Uh, the uh, Equalizer was it received the cover award and and uh, it was the lead article. I was incredibly impressed and very humbled because they said, we checked on all of this and we see no, uh, uh, nothing written about equalization until you came along. So we're going to make a big deal. And they did. And from that, it went with, with all the rest of them. Of course, I, I love parametric equalization. That's exactly what's in the Yesu. It's also mm -hmm. what's right over there, right there, that little blue box right there. Uh -huh. Everything I do goes through that uh, on the AM side. Uh, the ICOM stuff and ESU, I don't have to worry about that. 
but uh, you know, we get into how to set the ASUS, and there it is, right there. And they have all their nonsense. Well, that's what it is, because that's all you need to know, right there. And uh, I've helped so many people, and I, I really feel good about it because they were ship at sea with no paddle. <laughs> how how do you feel about some of the audio that you hear on on the air from hams today that? that maybe aren't taking a lot of time to figure out how to set their EQ. Well, I feel sorry for them because they could be getting a lot more out of their, their rig. Kenwood came to me. That was a bad deal. I, um, I told him, I said, look, six band <laughs> EQ. Oh no, we're going to do more than that. I said, no, more is not better. Six band is all you really need because they wanted to do it much better. And they didn't want that parametric stuff. Okay. Look, that's came from their manual. That's Holy moly, that's amazing that they actually published that in their manual. Yeah. I'm, I'm really surprised. You go look it up. There it is. That's on their ten thousand or whatever thousand dollar thing. And Holy said, smokes! Said, no, this is what you have to do, and you don't need thirteen bands to start with. But if you got them, this is what you have to do to them. <laughs> and if all else fails, go get one of Julius Jones boxes. That works great. Sure, very, very well known. Um, there's a guy in Ukraine building a little six band, and it's really nice. And um, so there are things out there, but kind of sacrilegious if you're buying a radio with all this stuff in it and you're just too stubborn 